Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts. Welcome. This is going to be talking about our softball base running and fielding. We're going to go through some basics here with force outs from a running standpoint as a base runner, as well as from a fielding standpoint. So right now our image shows that there's no base runners. We just have the batter. Automatically, there's always going to be a force out at first base, no matter what our scenario is. So the ball gets hit. Our batter must run to first base as long as that ball is in fair territory and it becomes a force out. As you see on the right side here, as far as the fielding team, all they need to do is step on the base with the ball in hand. And again, the force out is here at first base. As we continue through the slides, I'm going to have the letter R indicate our runner, and then the arrows are going to indicate where that runner needs to go to when that ball is hit on the ground or touches the ground at any point in fair territory. So right now we have a runner on first base, so our force outs are going to be at second base and the batter running to first base. So again, the fielding team simply just needs to touch the base with the ball in hand. If that ball is hit in the air and it has not touched the ground yet, the base runner here at first should not take off and run immediately to first or to second base because it has not touched the ground yet. That's the, our, our, our idea of tagging up. So again, base runners on a base should not run until the ball has touched the ground. As we're adding base runners, we have now force outs at first, second, and third because we have runners at first and second. Ball touches the ground, we must run. Our general rule of thumb is going to be if there's a base runner directly behind you, you are needing to run. So right now, the person at second base, there is somebody directly behind them on first base. So that is what makes a force here at third. Same idea. The person at first base, the person directly behind them is the batter at home plate. So that is forcing them to go run to second base again once the ball touches the ground. And our last scenario is if there's a person on every single base, once that ball touches the ground in fair territory, now all base runners are force outs and the fielding team can simply touch the base with the ball in hand. You can also tag the person as they are running, but you do not have to, but that can be another option to get that player out. Now here I've added a couple extra notes on the left side. Again, that general rule is if somebody is directly behind you, you are forced to run. So right now we have a base runner at second base. There is nobody directly behind them on first base. So this base runner does not have to run once the ball touches the ground. They can choose to run, but they do not have to run to third base. If the person on second base does choose to run, at that point, now, that player must be tagged. So down here, if he or she chooses to run to third base, they must be tagged with the ball or with the glove as the ball is in hand. We still have a force out at first from the batter. Another scenario, we have runners on first and third base. Runner on third base is not a force out. Nobody directly behind on second base. Runner on first base is a force runner. So they must run once that ball touches the ground. We have a force out at second. If the player decides to run from third to home, again, that player must be tagged out. So right now we have force outs at first and second, tagged out at home. This is our only scenario where a runner is directly behind 
and that player or players do not have to run. So yes, the person on third, somebody is directly behind on second base. What makes this not a force is that nobody is standing on first base. So if both runners choose to run, both runners are non-force players and must be tagged. The only player that is a force out, again, is at first base. Again, important to remember, base runners can only start running off the base once that ball has touched the ground. If they leave the base, they must go back before the, they can run to the next base once the ball is caught in the air.